You know what I would really like to do? I would really like to rush the passer. Okay. I would really like to do it, just so I can like, like get one play and like, celebrate. I would love to have that responsibility. We're to have the opportunity. What would be your sack dance then? I would probably get, I would probably get a penalty. I'm for <laughs> for sure. your celebration? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I would definitely Flag get a penalty. Slide. Welcome into Out of Bounds, our guest today, DJ Humphreys. I feel like I needed to say it, Humphreys. Yeah, like you got to put the emphasis on that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Thank, thank you for having me. Now, coming off back-to-back -back wins, can you just feel the difference in the locker room and around this building? Oh, yeah, this is definitely a different level of confidence with guys. You know, you start winning, the technique that you've been working starts to work, and you start believing in the things that you're doing, and it becomes a lot more second nature. You're out there being able to play a lot more confidence. You can let your personality show on the field when you're confident in what you're doing because you really attack guys. And in the first month, despite not getting the wins, I still feel like the confidence was there. Is this something oh, yeah. that you guys felt was going to be revealed soon? Yeah, I think it was just one of those things that's kind of like uh, everyone bought in early. It's just okay. a process of seeing the buy-in work. And when Clicking. you see the buy-in work, it's like, oh, well, we can start working everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's different when you're, when you're learning new techniques and doing new stuff. It's kind of like, ah, this is not how I'm used to doing it. And then it works and it's like, oh, well, let me try that one too. And let me try that one too. And then next thing you know, everybody's buying into what we're trying to do and stuff is starting to click a lot smoother. It gives you the confidence. hundred percent, yeah. So in Cincinnati, it was a strong ground game that got the win. And then against Atlanta, it was the offense clicking on all cylinders. Is that what's going to make you guys so dangerous for defenses? Because you guys, they could have to pick their poison at that point. 100%. I think that's, I think that's kind of what we were hitting at early in the offseason when we were taking a lot of flack early on for not running our offense and stuff. Just kind of understanding that it's, it's a process. You know, and even, even once we start running it, understanding that it's a process, this is the first time that coaches call these plays and, and understanding scenarios and situations when to call stuff and how to play stuff. This is the first time that college has been in a lot of these scenarios. So it's a lot of times that we're going to take bumps and bruises early on, but you see now the, the, those self-inflicted wounds are starting to become positive plays. And a lot of those sacks where we're confused are starting to become throws out of bounds. And you know what I mean? It's just a weekly progression. And I think that's, that's, that's kind of our, our message each week is just trying to pick something to keep building and building. Yeah, and we've already seen Coach just evolve so much. How yeah. have you seen this offense evolve since you've Man, it's, it's, it's funny because you, when you've been, when you be around, when you've been around for a while, you start kind of, you, you understand the game, a game plan, you understand what we're trying to do. And early on, it's like, man, we don't have many runs mm -hmm. here in the, on the goal Tight line, you know what I mean? Stages, yeah, 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 you know, so you start seeing stuff like that and then the week start going, it's like, oh, we got a lot more 12 in this week, we got a lot more, you know, and it's, 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 it's always positive to see because you see it, 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 it's a coach that's practicing what he's preaching. He's not telling everybody to go out and pick something and get better at it, and he's still doing the same stuff that he was doing the week before. Mm -hmm. He's doing the same thing, you know, and I think it's always a lot easier when you're dealing with a coach that's played before because the mindset is different. You right. know, it's different when you, it's a different feeling when you've been burned before and you feel it and you feel like you got to go out the next week and respond. You know, it's yeah. a different mindset coming from a guy that's played the game and has a different type of pride like that. So it's really cool to see him grow and, right. and progress as a coach as well. So with that, do you feel like you guys are still forming your offensive identity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, I just, just being on the inside of it, I feel like it's so much of our offense that we haven't been able to access yet just because we're still, even though it looks better now, we're still working through a lot of bumps. You know, we're still working right. through a lot of speed bumps and it's, it's, it's cool to see, you know, when you win and you look back like, man, look at all these plays we left out right. here. We could have did this, we could have did that. And it's like, it's all, even in winning, there's always ways to grow and ways to learn and move forward. Absolutely. Now, shout out to the big guys. No sacks last week. And you guys really just seem to be forming as a unit. How would you just assess your, your guys' play? It's hard not to be I know you're passionate about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard <laughs> not to be very uh, passionate in moments like this, especially when you've been here for a while and you've dealt with the flack like mm -hmm. we've dealt with. When you've been here for the last three or four years, you've yeah. dealt with the backlash. And, being the worst offensive line in the league, so when when the O line room when 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 Coos come in the room and tell us that we're we're number one in, in, in five yard runs and, and we're number nine in, in rushes per game and, and and we're number two in the pressure rate, when you start hearing stuff like that, it gives you that confidence, it gives you that that bravado. Like I want, we got to keep we're trending in the right direction. We want to keep doing this right stuff because. It's such a different feeling in the building when you walk around and you're one of the, you're the guys versus the guys that, that you know what I mean the reason yeah. versus the solution you know it's it's, it's a different definitely a different feeling and it's it's great because you got a group a room full of guys that that wear that badge with pat with, with pride and 
we don't have any relaxers in our room. Right. You know, I mean, our coach is not a, a chill guy. We don't have any guys that's kind of hanging our hat on and success, and we're gonna roll our hat out there. We got guys that's in our room that every week, yeah, we might have whooped some guys, but it's like, hey, these five plays, I did this, I did this. Hey, this week we gotta make sure we work on this because right. we showed this on film, and it's like, hey, we just beat those guys, but it's still every week we gotta find something to progress on. And I think that's been working for us. Now in the preseason, I remember asking you just what you think, what it would be like, uh, you know, blocking for a guy, covering for a guy like Kyler Murray. Now with game time under your belt, what is it like? Take me inside the trenches, just not knowing if he will, you know, scramble or just pass protecting for him. What is that like? You know, sometimes it's very good because you know I had I had a play early in the game last week where I got beat off the line. I was laid off the ball, and the guy beat me. And if I got a normal pocket pass, it's a sack. One of the ones that hurts, you know, I got beat at the line and he gets, but you got a guy like Kyler, he's able to escape and give me a chance to get back in position and finish a block and now he throws it down downfield for 25 yards. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we dealing with a guy like that is just understanding that there's no clocks and, and you just there's no give. He can extend the play at any time. And I think that's it's, it's one of those things is like, man, it's, I, I, this is the guy that I would love to have on my side versus playing against this guy. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I feel like we, I, I know what it feels like to have like a guy like Russell in the backfield now, just mm -hmm. extending those plays and, and keeping it rolling. You've been a big fan of his since day one. Oh, yeah. You have a now playing six weeks together, a favorite Kyler Murray story? Play or story? Story. It could be in the locker room. It could be anything. Um, I think just the way that we try to interact with him. Okay. Because like, the offensive line, we're a, we're, a, we're a big personality guys. There's a lot of funny dudes. I don't dudes believe in the, that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of funny dudes in the old line room, and we communicate with each other well. And you know how it is for young people. You know, this is a little different. These yeah. millennials are little, they used to <laughs> FaceTime and Snapchat. You're not a millennial, and, uh, yeah. I'm an old soul millennial. You know, I was born in 93. There's a, diff there's a big difference between 93, 94, and beyond. Oh, That's Lord. a huge difference. You know, they didn't even have really rugrats. So, you know, their, <laughs> they can't their childhood you is just completely different. <laughs> so you just got to figure out ways to relate. So I think right. like our day-to-day -day interactions with him, mm -hmm. you know, just the growth and, and pulling yeah. back the many layers of, of Kyler Murray, because mm -hmm. we, we do, a, we snatch it very aggressive. We don't give him a chance to, <laughs> to be a cool guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we try to make sure that. He stays humble. Yeah, we have to. Even though he's NFC offensive player. Somebody's okay. got to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it's your job. Oh, yeah, man, somebody's got to do it. He right. enjoys it though, he's a good sport. Yeah, he is. Now we have some fans who sent in, big time Hump fans that sent in some questions. First one coming from Ego225. He wants to know, you host a radio show, The Big Red Rage mm -hmm. Weekly. Is this something that you want to do in the future? TV, radio, personality, I can see it. <laughs> so this is my thing. I really enjoy, you know, the back and forth yeah. of radio. You know, but I just feel like I need a camera in the room, you know, because I just feel like I'm you too handsome. You have a face for television. TV. You know, I have a good voice for radio, but I feel like <laughs> my face for TV outweighs my well, voice for Well, then you can radio. do it all. Yeah, that's why I'm really glad to have a camera guy that comes and, you know, films it. Yeah. My grandmother gets to see that cut Getting up, so everything happy. on your reel yeah, to yeah. push just, out one day. <laughs> just, just building game tape, you know. But hopefully one of these days I'll have a TV show. Okay. Uh, Got to check me out. <laughs> All right, we will follow that. Um, next one coming from Ryan One wants to know what is it like being an inspiration for a lot of youth, himself included. Wow, he says. wow. Yeah. That's a that's a funny one because that's something that I wear with pride. You know, that's like uh, I come from a very small town, Union, South Carolina. It's not right. very many people that uh, that really make it out of there. You know, the last person before we was my father. You know, so yeah. just having being able to have a role model like that and understanding, seeing all my classmates that don't have those same role models, you know what I mean? And seeing how different that, that makes for them. I just want to be able to be a light to show people from places like that I'm from that it's, it's a chance. It no matter what someone tells you or no matter where you come from or how small it is, it, there's a chance for you to get out of there and do something positive with your life. So I just try to make sure that I'm always showing that to the youth and, and putting my best foot forward to give them a good example. Awesome. Last one coming from Ali Wade. She wants to know if you could play any other position, what would it be? Mm. It's a lot of those, man. I just. Is there a time when you're watching the game like, ooh, I would love to. Uh, you know what I would really like to do? I would really like to rush the passer. Okay. I would really like to do it just so I can like, like get one play drum? and like celebrate and. <laughs> You know, and have a great game because yeah. I made one play. I would love to have that responsibility. Yeah, you really don't get the spotlight to celebrate yeah, like they you know? do. So yeah. if you 
were to have the opportunity, what would be your sack dance then? I would probably get, I would probably get a penalty. I'm for <laughs> for sure. your celebration? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I would definitely Lags get a penalty. Line. I've already prepared myself to get a get a get a uh, fine if I ever score a touchdown. Oh. I mentally prepared myself. I'm definitely gonna do something. What I'm are you not doing? What's, do. What are you I'm probably gonna here? punt the ball in the stands. Like that's my like initial, <laughs> what I want to do. As soon as I cross the line, just punt it in the stands. <laughs> The ball is definitely going in the stands. I might go in the stands as okay. well. It might be a, might a like... Red Sea Leap or something, you oh. know? So I don't know. I'm definitely like going to get a fine the for sure. I like that, the Red Sea Leap. Any dance moves? No dance moves. I'm a two-step kind of guy. I don't really have a lot of rhythm. Keep right yeah. here. Lamont Gilliard is actually teaching me all these new dances, the whoa. The new one, oh, he's yeah. teaching it to me. I'm oh, not yeah. ready to, to show Let's it yet. Let's do it. Ready? No, I'm not ready. You can do it. It's see, a little more. Yeah, see, that's more. what I'm saying. I'm yeah. still learning. I'm still, <laughs> still learning. Still learning. <laughs> it's not that part. It's the it's the build up. It's that 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 little motion right uh -huh. there. That's the part I can't figure out. I can do it sitting down, but standing up is a you whole. You just need to bend the knees. Yeah, it's, all on the it's knees. a lot. That's a lot of coordination. <laughs> I don't know if I'm well, ready. Well, hopefully we see it this week. Stack three in a row. Yeah. Get you a little a little well yeah, dance. Yeah, we go on a streak. I definitely will dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, DJ. Thank y'all, man. Hey Cardinals fans, welcome to our official YouTube channel for the Arizona Cardinals and our Emmy Award winning show, Flight Plan. Now this is a place to get to know some of your favorite players and coaches on and off the field, as well as stay up to date with all your NFL news. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video.